Greetings on this fourth Sunday of Advent as we await the coming of our Lord as the Incarnate One. You can see the beauty of the sanctuary this morning is being enhanced by the array of poinsettias given in memory and in honor of different people. Please see the bulletin announcement or visit the website for a complete listing. You also see the large Christmas card on display that is dedicated each year to those who have donated money to the Unity Food Pantry in lieu of sending Christmas cards this season. This year's cover was created and colored artfully by Pam Frost. A list of those who made donations is included also in the booklet as well as in the bulletin. There is still time to make a donation and we will update the card and listing with the Christmas Eve service which will be posted in the What's Up at Unity email going out this week. Our Christmas Eve services will be pre-recorded and uploaded to our website, our Facebook page, and a link will be provided to the What's Up at, through the What's Up at Unity email going out after, um, during the course of Christmas Eve week. You can then watch the service at whatever time you choose on Christmas Eve or even on Christmas Day in the sacred place of your home. We have had to postpone the Santa at the Manger event today due to the inclement weather not only here but between here and the North Pole. So we have postponed it until Wednesday at 6 o'clock, same location in our parking lot, and Santa will be here to engage the children and families. Everyone will be receiving a Christmas kit being delivered to your home or your apartment in the course of the next few days. Listen for a phone call, your doorbell, or a knock at the door, and be prepared to receive your kit that will include a bulletin for the Christmas Eve services along with a candle uh, that you can use for that service as you might normally do here in this sacred space. There are also a few other things in the a uh, kit that hopefully will make for a good Christmas tide season for all of you. My friends, it is also with a deep sense of sadness that I pass on the news that Olga Prefer moved on to the Kingdom Triumphant yesterday. All of you know Olga's many connections to the life of this congregation musically, artistically, and a multitude of other ways, not the least of which is the Chrismon tree ornaments that she oversaw for a multitude of years. The arrangements are indefinite at this point, but we will be holding a live stream service to celebrate her life and bear witness to the resurrection sometime probably between Christmas Day and New Year's Day. I would ask you to hold her family in prayer, especially her daughter Chris Popovich and her family as they go through this time in the midst of this season. The timing of such news is always difficult. However, it is interesting that the news comes just as we are preparing for a blue Christmas service. And here to tell you more about that service is Rose. Good morning. I would like to invite you all to a blue Christmas service, which will be happening here online, Monday at 7 p.m. We all come into this Christmas season with our own burdens and needs. Some of us may really just want a space to be joyful. And we hope to offer those spaces with our weekly church services and our Christmas Eve offerings. However, if you're feeling a little less joyful this season, or if you are struggling to live into this perception of Christmas as the happiest season, we want to honor that too. 2020 has been a hard year. Many of us are weary. Our world is weary. And we wanted to create a worship space where we can all come to name and hold our pain. The loss of loved ones, the ache of other losses, such as health, relationships, jobs, faith, or dreams. The weight of heavy hearts, a desire for hope and peace. 
This is a worship service where we can gather in loss, anger, doubt, fear, fatigue, and hope. It is a space for us to bring our whole selves, bumps, bruises, and all. It will be streamed online through Facebook, so you will be able to find it the same way you find our weekly church services. If you can't tune in tomorrow at 7 p.m., it will be available afterwards on Facebook and YouTube. Lastly, we are also hoping that this worship service can be a way to love our community. So if you know anyone in your life who needs a space where it is okay to not be okay, or if they are holding pain and joy together this season, please invite them. And if you are coming, we suggest that you have a candle nearby because there will be an interactive component to the worship service. So that will be tomorrow, 7 p.m., bring a candle. Friends, as we turn to the gospel today, we engage the birth narrative anew. As it begins with a message to Mary, let us ponder now such unusual news and the meaning for us as we seek to bear the word come unto us as it was given and formed in Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, there will be no end. 
Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, as in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. An angel spoke to Mary, do not be afraid. The child she carries will be God's son, and the world will never be the same. An angel spoke to Mary, do not be afraid. God was with her, and God is with us, drawing us into worship and praise.
it's almost time for Jesus to come. We are nearly ready. It's hard to wait. Who will we meet when we gather at the manger? From 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we remember God's love in sending Jesus into the world and Jesus' love for all people. Love came down at Christmas, love all lovely, love divine, love was born at Christmas, star angels gave the sign. The lighting of the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. The first candle reminds us that God's people hoped for a savior. Do not be afraid to hold hope. The second candle reminds us that Jesus came to bring peace and goodwill. Do not be afraid to bring peace. The pink candle reminds us of the joy Jesus brings us to all people. Do not be afraid to practice joy. And the fourth candle reminds us that God sent the baby Jesus because God loved us. Do not be afraid to choose love. Let us pray. Dear God, we are so glad that you loved us. Help us love one another. Amen. because we have a very special thing happening this week. No, not Santa Claus, although that's special too. But we have the birth of a baby. I don't know if you remember when you were babies, but when you would get upset, or your tummy would hurt, or you were cold, your only response was to cry. The baby Jesus is just the same. And when you would cry, your mom or your dad or your grandma or maybe a brother or sister would pick you up and rock you back and forth and they would sing to you and you would begin to relax. And as you would begin to relax, whoever was singing would sing just a little bit softer so that you would fall asleep. So... As you think of the baby Jesus this week, think of him as just a regular little baby who grows into probably the greatest figure in history. But this week, he's just a baby and he cries just like you did. Oh, 
Lord, remember us. Have regard for your covenant. We need your redemption. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. An angel spoke to Mary, do not be afraid. And yet, O Lord, we find ourselves paralyzed by fear of what we do not know. Forgive us our sins, O Lord, and give us the faith of Mary to respond to your grace with lives of grateful praise. We, where hands have brought destruction, desolation, and desecration, where words have condemned, betrayed, and deceived, where silence has concealed, isolated, and ignored, O come, Emmanuel, let us hear the good news that Mary first heard. Light is breaking, love is coming, the world is about to turn. Shine light in dark places, speak peace in the lands haunted by violence, and ransom your people from sin. As we remember your steadfast wait expectantly, we rejoice in your coming. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. In hope of the joy we experience now and the joy to come, let us recognize God with us, Emmanuel, in and through the people around us. Trusting in the Holy Spirit to unite us across space and time, let us share the peace of Christ this morning. The Christ in me reflects the Christ in you. In her book, A Weary World, Kathy Escobar reminds us of the messiness of the birth narrative, including the messy world, the incarnate one came to embrace. Kathy writes, human beings like a cleaner, neater story, theologies that fit into a box and easy answers to complicated questions. As a result, we often sanitize the birth narrative with neat and tidy scenes. We like staying in our comfort zones, boundaries that keep out the riffraff and the unknown, and help us maintain life on our terms. Humans like to formulate formulas like if we do this, believe this, act like this, then this will happen. But we've all been around long enough to know this is not real life. 
The real Christmas story isn't clean, neat, or tidy. It's a crazy, wild story. God choosing to reveal himself in a human baby, born to unwed parents in a dirty stall filled with animals and chaos. The images we often conjure up are of a nativity, perfect and serene, with an adoring Mary gazing at Jesus with calm animals all around. In reality, it was a smelly, noisy, painful, and chaotic scene, kind of like a lot of our lives right about now. Just Jesus as a human being all tangled up in the mess of real life and all the dynamics of real life, like we actually experience, Jesus came into that mess, that world. In her book, Kathy has a simple sketch of the birth scene complete with a baby in a wooden box, two weary parents on their knees, surrounded by straw everywhere and animal dung. A few scattered sheep here and there, and the unclean lowly shepherds, and a camel who brought a bunch of foreigners to the scene. The Christmas narrative reminds us that the unexpected, unimportant people were always at the center of all of it. The story was always about turning power on its head. The least likely people in the least likely place are the ones drawn to Jesus while royalty wants to kill him. It is a story of hope for the unimportant, humble, open, and willing to be formed by Jesus. Jesus brings mercy and peace for all people. That's part of the weirdness of this story that shows love in ways we do not expect, but it shows up in all the unexpected company. Today we lit the fourth candle of the Advent wreath, referred to as the love candle. The lighting of these four candles, hope, peace, joy, and love, are all comforting. Yet the hope, peace, joy, and love God gave to the world in the way of Jesus is not about feeling comforted. It's not about feelings and emotions. It's about action. It is seen in action in Mary's yes to be the Christ bearer. Or in Greek, the Christikos referring to the indwelling of the Lord that one bears. It is illustrated by Joseph taking Mary as his wife, even though she was carrying a child that was not his. There was a post on Facebook earlier this week that I think was intended to be kind of comical, but it stirred a different thought in my reflection. It's a picture of a teenage Jesus. And he poses a question to his mother, Mary. Where do babies come from, Mom? And Joseph's in the background. And he echoes, yes, Mary, where do babies come from? It prompted me to think from the divine spark of love. Love is to be at the core of every creation, especially a child. Can you imagine, can you just imagine for a time the amount of explaining that surrounded the pregnancy of Mary? The questions would swirl around her for nine months of her bearing that love within her womb. Questions would arise then at his birth, 
and the naming of him Jesus, God with us. Questions arose constantly throughout Jesus' life and his death by crucifixion and certainly on the day of his resurrection and following age unto age, eon unto eon. They still arise all around us as the birth narrative becomes a reality for our bearing God's word into the world. As one of God's created children, we are called to be the beloved disciples of Jesus. And we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to bear the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love of the Lord into the world. Indeed, Advent and Christmas gives us an annual opportunity for a great reset in the world. As Jason Whitehead stated it, this season has always been about the Savior sent to reset the world. And every year we remember a revolutionary act of love that gives us pause and shows us what it means to be true disciples. It's an opportunity to take stock of our lives, offering a chance to inventory how we live, how we move, and how we breathe. Especially breathe this year. This year has been a year no one wanted. And it seems everyone wants to jump to 2021 as if flipping the calendar page will make all things renewed. No, this year, with Advent and Christmas and up through to Epiphany, we need to be intentional in the spiritual practice of resetting our lives. That was part of the purpose of sending everyone a devotional and the activities to gauge in during Advent. And it's the intention of the Christmas kit we're sending your way this week to help you focus on the essential reason for this season. Where is your focus on this holiday or on this holy day? If Advent and the unfolding of Christmas teaches us nothing else, then let it teach us that a great reset can happen. The only thing we have to do is be willing to see God's love that is infused into the everyday moments we live, experience, in all of the objects of our lives, like Mary and Joseph did, even if not according to to our plans, nor was it according to their plan. This is hard work, my friends. It requires us to be mindful about bringing God with us in every part of our lives, letting him dwell with us and be Christikos, Christ-bearers too. It requires us to be innovative, creative, flexible, in how we approach our lives, not only within our community of faith, but by faith, see the community we are called to offer ministry and mission to in the name of our Lord. It's about pondering how we can take the ordinary and unexpected moments and unexpected people that we encounter and address them with the way made in the manger, transforming the things we usually take for granted every day and recognizing them as sacred gifts. I want to thank Jess Franceschina for the illustration she provided for the What's Up at Unity email this week. It proclaims, love came down, heaven was born on earth. Let us ponder in our hearts, as Mary did at the birth of Jesus, how we give birth 
to the salvation of the world. Jesus' mission was to enter the messiness of life. As a human being among us, as one of us, to enter the messiness, not to sort it out and make it perfect like we are often tending to try to do, but to engage it and transform it into holiness and wholeness and be with useness in the mess to bless us by being with us. Perhaps God is getting ready for a brand new thing, a new reset in the world. Can we perceive it? More importantly, can we receive it? Today's scripture reflection comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And I have to admit my bias, this is one of my favorite passages of the birth narrative across all four Gospels. For the first century community that Luke was writing to, the language of Jesus' birth announcement here was closely associated with the birth proclamation that the Roman emperor had read to all of his subjects. So Luke is saying in this comparison that in Jesus, we have a new ruler, but a ruler who comes as a humble baby and who reveals himself to shepherds, to those on the margins of society, a ruler who offers a new way of seeing and being in this world. Hear now the word of the Lord. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The word of the Lord. As we reflect on this scripture, Carolyn Kozlowski will bless us with a rendition of What Child Is This?
I mentioned earlier the Christmas kits that were coming your way this week. As usual, this has been a busy season for the life of the church, the staff, and others making it as personal as possible since we can't connect in person. Even this afternoon, we were hoping to host this Meet Santa at the Manger event, a safe way to bring some joy into a gloomy atmosphere and with a new dusting of snow to make it even more festive. But what we get? Slush and rain and chilly weather and foggy conditions so that Santa would not easily be able to make it. So we postponed, but still intend to have that moment in the midst of this week. Now, we are not only prepping for worship services, but also for how we will continue connecting and innovatively Engage disciples in the ministry and mission God calls us together in unity. Right now, the nominating committee is discerning the leadership for the new forms of ministry and mission that are forming and will continue to reform in the years ahead. If you sense a call yourself or ponder thoughts of someone you think would fill these positions for guiding our discernment, compassion, hospitality, and actions as a congregation, please send the name via text, email, or snail mail to myself or Pam Frost or call the office so we can refer that name to the nominating committee for consideration in the weeks ahead. We are also gearing ourselves up financially for what appears to be a balanced budget for 2021. Although that will depend on the generosity and adjustments that have been shown through this challenging year, we hope you will continue the generosity as we close out this year, enabling us to start the winter season with confidence. And we hope you will return the Goal for Giving card included in your Advent and Christmas kit, just simply to show us, the council, the leadership team, that you want to be engaged in the ministry and mission of the congregation, that you want us to continue to connect with you. Remember, it's a goal that you hope to fulfill by sharing the discipleship of the congregation. Join me in a time of prayer. God, you lift up the lowly and fill the hungry with good things. You supplant ruthless competition with generosity in which all have enough. You envision a world in which the humiliated are restored to their rightful place as bearers of your image. In this season of Advent, Help us discern the places where you are coming to us to repair and renew your good but broken creation. By the power of your spirit at work in our lives, liberate us from chronic selfishness and self-negation so that we might discover our capacities for compassion and the pursuit of justice. Help us to see others in ourselves as bearers of your image, as people who shine like the sun. Help us also to live according to your great commandment, to love you with our whole being and to love others as ourselves. Help us to trust that your future is struggling towards realization even now in our midst. Empower us for solidarity with all who have been marginalized in our world whose voices have been suppressed. Give us ears to hear their hopes and fears so that together we might restore your world on the foundation of the justice that you would tend for us in Christ. Into your hands we place those who weigh heavenly on our hearts this week, those facing violence in their neighborhoods and countries, 
healthcare and frontline workers who are serving selflessly during this pandemic, those experiencing loss during this time, loss of loved ones, loss of health, loss of income, loss of security. Leaders who are discerning new ways forward and plans for how to help those they govern in this challenging time. Congregations and ministries who are now finding new ways to worship and serve during this Advent season. We pray specifically for the healing and medical providers caring for Jody, Brett, Joanne, Tammy, Cheyenne, Josh, Jonah, Marianne, Linda, Levi, Laney, and Brooke. We pray for comfort for the Boehm and Ide families and for Olga's family as well, whose loved ones have moved on to the kingdom triumphant. And we lift up the names of others who are on our hearts now. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, 
prepare your hearts. Prepare room in your heart for what God desires to give to all of us in the community of faith. For God has found favor with us in sending his one and only son to be with us that we might provide a reset for the world. Go and bear the image of God in whom you were created. Go and extend the love of the redeeming Lord Jesus Christ and go with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to spark divine love in you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, alleluia and amen.